Hey guys, Jeremy Parvin here. Today I'm going to tell you why I think that 2021 may be the best year of your lifetime to invest in rental property. Call me crazy, but hear me out. I've created a passive income of over $50,000 a month in a real estate portfolio that's now worth six and a half million dollars, all while doing a full-time job, and I'm gonna show you how you can do it too. In the beginning of 2020, we start off with some record low unemployment rates. Then COVID-19 hits, and we see some record high unemployment rates. And then all of a sudden, the stock market is going wild, and housing prices are soaring. So what's going on, and how can you take advantage of this to build some passive income and some wealth. I'm gonna tell you why 2021 can be the best year in your life to hit the like button. On a serious note, there have been more millionaires created in bad economic times than good economic times. So don't sit this one out. Oh, and also Lily wanted to say hello, and she wanted to ask you if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll know when we have our next videos up. Oh, and she's giving away a pair of Apple AirPod Pros to one of our first 1,000 subscribers. So please forward this to other people and comment below. Thank you. Say hi, Lily. And by the way, these are my personal opinions, so please do your own research and um, consult your professionals. So let's get into it. The unemployment was at record lows below 4%. As soon as COVID-19 hit, unemployment hit a record of 14.7% in April of 2020. And then by December of 2020, it came back down to a more reasonable 6.7%. But this is something we hadn't seen since 2014, so still not back down to where it was. So then the Federal Reserve made an announcement. Now the Federal Reserve is our nation's central bank, which simply loans money to banks and controls the interest rate as it works to control inflation. They made an announcement that employment would become their priority and they would forgo trying to keep inflation around 2%. So they're telling us they're gonna let inflation ride while they work to correct the unemployment rate. So what have they done? They've kept the rates that they loan money to banks extremely low. And the 30-year mortgage rate just hit an all-time low of 2.65 on January 7th of 2021. So this is what's causing the housing market to go wild. It's making new mortgages cheaper, basically. It's allowing buyers to buy that more expensive house for the same mortgage payment. Another thing that's pushing prices up is the fact that owning a home is cheaper than renting. And so you've got first time buyers moving out of apartments and buying homes. And this cheap interest rate just escalates that. And then let's talk about the supply side. So COVID has obviously slowed down construction. Existing homeowners who were thinking of moving are kind of waiting to see what happens until after the pandemic. So this is also hurting the supply, pushing prices up. There's also been a worldwide material shortage with factories shut down or slowed down or back ordered. That's pushing the price of materials up and therefore causing housing prices to also go up. It took me two months to recently get a gas stove in one of my rental properties. We ordered some siding for a house. We still don't have it. I believe it's gonna take two or three months to get that. Uh, and our local stores continue to be short stocked or out of stock of materials that have usually been uh, in, in stock all the time. I'm sure you've seen this in your markets as well. So housing prices have been soaring and appreciation on those houses for those of us that are currently owning properties. And so in September, we hit a six year high of 6.7% housing prices increase in the US. And so that may not sound huge, but first of all, that's in the whole country. And so some markets are better than others. And even in each town, different areas are better than others. It spiked in November of 2020 to 8% annually. So in my current market in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Zillow is currently predicting that one of the zip codes that I like to invest in will increase by over 10% in the next 12 months. In my local market, there are actually more realtors than there are houses for sale. All these things are causing housing prices to go up. So let's talk about inflation a second. So in addition to all this cheap money from the Fed to the banks and to the consumers, the other big thing going on are the stimulus packages. And so in March, there was a $2 trillion CARES Act to try to help with the COVID relief. And this was simply added to our national debt. And then just in December of 2020, we had another 900 billion or almost a trillion dollars of additional relief added onto our national debt. In January of 2021, the month that I'm making this video, there's a proposal of another $1.9 trillion. This would be approximately a $5 trillion increase in our national debt, or about a 22% increase in our na national debt in just about a year. 
And so, in my opinion, this has got to cause inflation. So inflation is gonna cause all goods and services to go up in value and to cost more, and your dollar will be worth less over time. Housing will be one of those assets that goes up along with inflation. Now, the Fed is estimating currently about a 3.1% inflation in 2021 and that's above the two percent that it normally tries to control inflation to it doesn't think that it will pick up until about 2023 or 2024 so i think we have a couple years here to try to pick up some properties and to grow them with this inflation so what does all this mean it looks like we're going to be able to borrow money at a cheaper rate than the inflation on the housing market and this is crazy so it's almost like a transfer of wealth where owning the debt or the mortgage on your property is gonna become an asset and the house is gonna become a liability. As long as you buy rental properties that are cash flow positive and generate more money every month than they cost you, if inflation happens wildly like it did in the 70s, you're gonna do extremely well the more properties that you can put in your portfolio during this time. And if inflation doesn't happen, as long as they're cash flow positive, you'll do just fine as well. So basically buying rental properties with record low interest rates, just help you to be more cash flow positive. They make the payments on your properties less than they would be with higher interest rates. This makes your return on your investment higher. It makes you more resilient if bad times come. You can afford to pay the payment on it as it's smaller. Another thing, rents also increase during inflation. Since your payments are fixed, they'll become more affordable over time as inflation happens. The other thing that you should consider doing is refinancing. I've already refinanced my commercial property and that saved me $3,000 a month in my mortgage payment on my commercial property alone. I'm also working to refinance my 21 single family rental properties, which will also save me an estimated $3,000 a month. And so that total of $6,000 a month savings it just lowers my monthly operating expenses. It actually helps me in case bad times continue to come. It's like having uh, four more rental properties at an average of around $1,500 a month without owning a house and having roofs or plumbing or tenants and things like that. So that's very exciting. Uh, the other thing it does, it allows me to borrow more uh, from banks to buy more properties. It lowers my debt to income ratio. Robert Kiyosaki said it best when he said, during inflationary times, savers are losers and debtors are winners because inflation steals your savings and erodes debt. The US did this after World War II. They let inflation rise and the government is likely going to use this to their advantage by letting inflation run a bit. It will be easier for them to pay off this debt with inflated dollars. Another point I wanna make is that during times of inflation, you wanna buy things that go up in value and real estate is a fantastic thing that goes up in value with inflation. What makes it even better than that is when you can use leverage. For example, you, for, if you buy a house, you only have to put down 5% and the bank put da puts down 95%. So you're basically, you've heard a lot about Elon Musk. He doesn't want to get involved in anything unless he can make it 10, 10 times better, 10 times better. So you hear 10X everywhere, right? So if you put down 5% and the bank puts down 20, think 20X with real estate. So the combination of inflation along with using financial leverage to buy real estate with the compounding effects is going to result in making investors wealthy in a relatively short period of time if this tidal wave of inflation continues to build. In summary, so 2021 may be the best year in your lifetime to invest in real estate. I bought four houses in 2020. I've got another one under contract and I plan to buy more. So let me know what you think is going to happen in 2021 in the comments below. Also, let me know what other topics you'd like to hear about on my future videos. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you can see when we posted other videos. If you'd like to share this with other friends, you can hit the share button and like button. And again, we're giving one pair of AirPod Pros to one of our first 1,000 subscribers and we'd really appreciate your support by subscribing to the channel. Click on the little triangle below in the show notes so you can see a list of my favorite books, my renovation products, and my smart home products. And thank you for watching. Oh, and also Lily wanted to say hello, and she wanted to ask you if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll know when we have our next videos up. Oh, and she's giving away a pair of Apple AirPod Pros to one of our first 1,000 subscribers. So please forward this to other people and comment below. Thank you. Say hi, Lily.